okay. So, there's another fun thing that gets mixed up into the work here, and that is that cells have invested a lot of time and energy in building these structures, and if they're not perfect, the cell really doesn't want to just give up and undergo apoptosis. It wants to fire up any kind of rescue enzyme protective mechanisms that it can to make the cell viable, to make it work out. So we can edit receptors that have light chains that aren't perfect. All right, so I'm gonna back up. We've gone through all of this work, right? Building the heavy chain, testing, having the VPV bind, testing, does this work? Building the light chain, light chain work, can it bind back onto the heavy chain? Okay, great, we've gone through a whole bunch of stuff here. What happens if I build this receptor and the receptor is now complete, but we're still inside the bone marrow compartment and we discover that these cells start sticking T cell antigens inside bone marrow. That's, that's very bad, right? I don't want my T cells to bind onto my own antigens to elicit immune responses against them, right? If we have cell reactivity, generally that means those cells have to be forced to undergo apoptosis. The cell can reactivate RAD1 and 2, and it can try to re-edit the light chain that has been made, that is pairing with the heavy chain, that is causing autoreactivity. So we have a last ditch attempt effort. We built this guy, and now we discover, uh-oh, he's self-reactive. Just went through all of this. Can we see if we can fix it first? See if we can fix it first. If not, we will force it to undergo apoptosis. So what can happen is we turn recombination machinery back on, try to rearrange, try to fix the light chain. Maybe we make a whole new light chain and pair it back on, see if we can get rid of that self-reactivity. This is the last ditch attempt to save the cell if it's possibly autoreactive. But there is no guarantee that that will work. That reactivating light chain, rearranging it, turning it into a new light chain will, will stop self reactivity. And the reason why that's not a guarantee is because this could be causing some of the problem too. The heavy chain could be responsible for some of the affinity of the disease for binding on itself. It is a thing that is possible that we monkey around with cells in the lab and watch what they're doing. We can see that this process happens. I would tell you that 90% of the time, the steps don't work out. Only, only, really only about 5% of the cells that go through all this process actually make it out the other side. And this is true for B cells and T cells. And the reason why we're doing hematopoiesis 24-7 our whole lives trying to build up these repertoires of cells because the vast majority of what we make don't work out. As you would imagine, these processes are tightly regulated. When we turn on RAD1 and 2, we only want RAD1 and 2 to monkey around with heavy chain and light chain genes. We don't want them just cruising around like, oh, hey, this looks kind of like that. Maybe I should cut chromosome 12 for no particular reason at all, right? So there are regulatory enzymes that get involved in making sure that we're only activating these genes at the appropriate time and that we're only allowing these enzymes to cut at particular places where we want them to. Um, there are special promoter regions, enhancer regions, gene control regions that are responsible for activating the recombination activation genes, allowing them and only allowing for them to be activated inside our lymphocytes. Because the other weird thing to think about, right, is these genes, this chromosomal information exists in all of your somatic cells, right? So potentially these processes could be fired up and be happening inside cells that are not B cells or not T cells. We have to be sure that those genes are silenced and regulated inside those cells so that my epithelial cells don't decide to start making T-cells. 
So this shows some of the where where our control pieces of information are located within the encoded information. We have special enhancer regions adjacent to the constant chain promoters and enhancers that help get the right constant regions hooked up to our heavy chain and hooked up to our light chain so that we get the transcripts that we need. But you might be saying, okay, well, how do we know that IgM is the right antibody to make it this time or IgG is the right antibody to make it this time? When a B cell gets specific cytokine cues and they're actually lists, and I can show you the lists later on. If a B cell is out in the environment and encounters antigen and at the same time it encounters interleukin-4, this will turn on signal transduction that activates transcription factors and regulatory proteins that bind onto the enhancer region of IgE. So the types of hormones that are in the environment turn on specific regions of the gene to make sure that the right kind of antibody is made for the right type of pathogen response that we want. So that's how the enhancers help out. They sense, oh, it's my time to put this constant region on. Okay, so poor B cells express both IgM and IgG when they are fully mature. So they're, when we look at them, we know they're all done doing their rearrangement. They've done any last minute tweaking, maybe some light chain rearrangement to make sure that they're not autoreactive. I know a B cell is a mature, naive B cell, ready to go be out in the periphery if it is expressing IgM and IgG at the same time on its surface. The reason why the initial transcript that we make for the heavy chain has both all of the pieces for the mu constant region and the D constant region are kept in the transcript and differential splicing makes some of the BCRs IgM and some of the BCRs IgG. So we get a mix and match of both on the surface of the cell at the same time. We don't really know yet what role IgG plays in signal transduction for the cell but we know that if levels of IgM and IgG are high on the surface of a naive B cell, it's ready to go do its job. You gotta have both. We don't know what IgG binds. We don't know, <laughs> we know it has to be there, but we don't know why it has to be there yet. So this shows you. This is my primary transcript and it has the information for mu and it has the information for D. So this is what gets transcribed. This is my mRNA. It can be alternatively spliced. So I can get a version that makes mu, right? So I've cut off D, I've spliced so that I have mu. So this is gonna make my IgM. I have another version where we've spliced out the mu information and this gets added on to the D and the D gets expressed. And these can both be expressed at the same time because the transcript we get has all of the information. It's just up the splicing machine to decide which version we get. The other regions that are downstream, gamma, epsilon, alpha, are silent. Their enhancers have not been bound yet. And so they won't be added on to the transcript until they are physically accessible. It is signal transduction that allows those enhancers to become activated so that a transcript can be made with the gamma, alpha, epsilon. That stuff that has to happen to the B cell later on, cues that it gets later. So we're always gonna make IgM and IgD first, we go out there into the world, we contact antigen based on the hormone context that we're in when we bind that antigen. Is there IL-1, IL-2, IL-10, IL-6? 
Is there an APC over here giving me some other? Whatever the chemical cocktail is that's in the environment will turn on the enhancers that allow that cell to switch from making IgM and IgG to making IgE if it wants to or needs to. Okay. So it doesn't do it without permission. The B cell has it needs information from the outside. Here shows us the difference between are you membrane bound or are you a soluble antibody that will be released outside of the B cell to go float around in the environment and by an antigen by itself. So here again is our primary heavy chain transcript. It has the BBJ cell. It has mu and delta chain information that's there. Splicing is going to change what pieces of the transcript are maintained or kept and then translated. So we can splice. So here what we're doing is we're going to make an IgM. We're splicing out. This is a splice point. We're cutting off the membrane region. If I cut off the membrane region, this is now a soluble secreted IgM that the B cell will release into the environment. I'm still going to make some IgM that keeps the membrane portion on. And so I'm still going to make some IgM that is translated into the membrane so that I have some IgM on the surface. Okay. So the difference is just splicing. Where are we splicing at? If I splice out the transmembrane region, it's going to be soluble. If I leave the transmembrane region, I'm going to be translated into a membrane. I will be stuck. Does that make sense? This shows you what gets cut out. This is a hydrophobic coil region that gets translated into a membrane, holds, anchors the antibody into the membrane. That gets cut out, that gets cut off. You have this nice little soluble end. Antibody is released into the environment. Okay, so we feel we feel okay about PCR. PCR is the same but easier, simpler. Because you just have one heavy chain and white and one light chain that pair together. There are two forms. Of the, of the TCR that we can make, though. There's, there's more decks of cards for building the TCR than there are for building the BCR. The base structure is very similar to the, the hand. So I'm going to back up, way back, way, way up. The TCR is this. So there's heavy chain, there's light chain. Ooh. So beta chains are a type of heavy chain for the T cell. Alpha chains are the type of light chain for the T cell. We also have gamma delta versions. those pictures somewhere. But when we come back on Thursday, we'll go through building the TCR. It's very, very similar to the TCR. Yeah. So so if I back up, sorry. You're no, you're okay. So if we look at the, the B cell, right? You got your heavy chain and you got your light chain. Yeah. The TCR is just like that. I have a heavy chain. I have a light chain. When we come back, I'll list the heavy chain and light chain combination. Yep.